Hi, and welcome everyone to the Three Principles Global Community webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles to people throughout the world. Today, we have Elsie Spittle with us, which is such a, a wonderful treat for me, I hope for all of you as well. Elsie went from homemaker to global consultant and mentor of leading three principles practitioners. Elsie Spittle has devoted her life to sharing this transformative mental health paradigm with the world. Married for 55 years with a loving and supportive family, she has her own private business and is co-founder of the Three Principles School located on Salt Spring Island, British Columbia. She is the author of five books based on the Three Principles. You can learn more about Elsie at her website, 3phd.net, and I'll also post that underneath the recording of the video on YouTube. And just in case anybody doesn't know about the Three Principles School on Salt Spring Island, it is just um, something not to be missed. Everyone should do it at least once. It, it's such a wonderful experience. I just had to say that. Um, Elsie, thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to you. Wow, thank you. Uh, I must say, when I hear the introduction and and the bio that I gave you, <laughs> uh, it still it, it sort of takes me back when I hear it from someone else because it it seems like an impossibility that that could happen from a homemaker to doing what I do now, and the same thing can be said for what happened to Sid only like a thousand times and then some more from a welder to uh, a global educator and having his work taught in universities. It's, it's amazing. It's beyond dreams come true what these principles offer humanity. And, and I love that the first results in our contemporary times happened with Sid, with an ordinary bloke, <laughs> an ordinary Joe that wasn't educated, you know, had never studied psychology or psychiatry or theology. This profound experience that happened to him that revealed the mysteries of the universe just happen spontaneously. And that it happened to an ordinary guy continues to awe me when I, when I consider it, you know, when I do something like this. And then I remember Sid saying way back then, when I was in my strongest disbelief that anything profound had happened to him, um, that he, he said to both Ken and I, not too long after he shared his experience with us, that if we heard him, we would travel the world and share this understanding with others. And I just thought, oh, Sid, what nonsense, you know, <laughs> utter nonsense, what he was saying. I didn't believe that it could happen to him because he said he would do the same, he and his wife. And I thought that was nonsense, but when he, I was going to say suggested, but he didn't suggest. He came right out and said, you will do this. I thought it was impossible. And I never looked for it. I never sought it out, you know, trying to travel the world or trying to be a practitioner or a teacher. Uh, rather the reverse, I fought it. I fought this understanding for a year and a half. And despite that, despite myself and despite my resistance, I heard something. And that too really speaks to the fact that we all have innate health inside of us. That truly we are what we're looking for. If we're looking for peace of mind, it's inside of us. If we're looking for happiness, contentment, uh, 
general satisfaction in our life, it's inside of us. We already have it. If we're looking for simplicity, we already have it. And as I was reflecting this morning on, on my topic, I didn't know what I was going to offer when 3PGC invited me to, to talk. But I know enough now to just wait and that something will come up and whatever that something is, is usually right. And what came up was this, because this topic of how, how to be okay, you know, how to find peace of mind in a world that looks crazy. In our world right now, you look around, you look around at our politics, you look around at the confrontation and agitation happening between countries. You look at the ego of some of our politicians. So easy to get gripped by that. Me too. But I don't like the feeling of being gripped by my thinking. And over the years, I've learned more and more how to detach from that, knowing that I'm the, the gift of this understanding of these three principles is to offer us strength from within to choose the path, you know? And sometimes we choose a bit of a rocky path and we engage with the world and we engage with um, judgment of the world and so on and we feel the ramifications of that. And then at other times, we, we learn by the feeling that is our tolerance for negativity, for judgment, for dissatisfaction becomes less, like we just don't want that in our life. And so we're moved towards peace of mind more of the time. And, and so that's what came to me because when this journey first started for Sid <clears throat> and for the people that gathered around him that were drawn to the feeling of him, that we didn't understand what he was sharing with us, but our true nature responded to it. Our intellect and our ego, for many of us, it was like, no, no, no. Some of the people, it was, yeah, yeah this is what I've been looking for. Our world in those years, in 1973, 1974, is really no different than what it is now. We had all kinds of civic unrest going on. Uh, we had all kinds of confrontation between the political parties and sit-ins in Chicago and, you know, at the universities where students were protesting. We had the Vietnam War. We had... Um, men and women who were not wanting to join up in America, coming to Canada. So the unrest in our world was as prominent as it is now. And, and so part of what we discovered in those early days is Ken and I were drawn to wanting more peace in our lives, wanting more simplicity. And what occurred to us was to downsize and to sell our home in the city and move back to the land. And we found a beautiful piece of property outside of the city uh, in a rural area across from a gorgeous river, and we fell in love with it. It was bare property. We built our own home, and we loved it. But we found that we still had busy minds, even though we had simplified our physical world. We still were agitated by the world. Our minds were still busy. We were not content. There were moments where we were happy with what we had discovered in, in, in nature, in the rural area, being by this river that we could go down there and we would find solace but it wasn't lasting because it was outside in. Now we knew nothing about outside in or inside out, but it was at that point that Sid had his experience during a strike at the pulp mill, chaos. 
and he has this profound experience. And he loved being on strike <laughs> because it gave him time to enjoy the summer that we all were, you know, enjoy well, not we weren't enjoying summer, we were worried about the strike. But we could see that Sid was enjoying it because he had this profound experience. And he knew from the inside out that he and his family would be okay. And if people started to see what power, what spiritual power was resting inside of them, that they too would be okay. He tried to tell us this. And it was like, oh, Sid, you know, just forget it. We like to be with you because I don't know why, but we like to be with you. But don't talk to us about this nonsense. Nonetheless, <clears throat> we were a little bit more relaxed. And so early on, before, while we were building our, our little A-frame, we lived in, a, in our garage. We built the garage first. And we lived in there with our family while we were building the A-frame because we didn't have much money. And so Sid would come out and visit with us with his wife, Barb, at that time, who passed away many, many years ago. And because we were a little more relaxed, we could listen to him a wee bit more. And so sometimes I would find myself asking him something, usually about thought. And and sometimes we could listen more because the feeling was so strong as we would be sitting in this little small garage that was very cozy. I had tapestries on the wall and, you know, Indian uh, cloths hanging from the ceiling just to make it, you know, we were in the hippie era. And so we were, I was just wanting to make it cozy and it was. And so we'd sit in this little cozy environment and Sid would speak very mystically. And there was something about this mystical feeling as he spoke that kept me still and kept Ken still sometimes. And then other times it would be like, Sid, you know, I asked you not to talk about this. <laughs> I'd get on my high horse and, you know, go like this, you know, don't talk about this. And it was actually in that A-frame when we finally moved in that um, things came to a head where I got so agitated that I basically um, showed them the door when they came to visit one more time and I was in such distress. And I won't say any more about that because that story is on video and I've told that story so many times. But when I had that insight after that moment when I showed Sid the door and thought, you know, you're out of my life forever. I had an insight. Thought creates feeling. And it was simultaneous with the feeling that came with me. I can't tell you which came first. You know, it, it just, it was so together. It was so one. I just know that this overwhelming feeling of, of beauty, you know, of relief. And coupled with this phrase, thought creates feeling, that I found simplicity from the inside out. And, and then our lives changed you know, where we really began to realize that the simplicity is having a quiet mind where you're able to listen to our, our natural wisdom, to our spiritual intelligence that guides us in life. And so from then on, we we could see the world with different eyes without judging what was going on in the world. We had compassion for the world. We felt compassion for people that were coming from the States to not be a part of the, the draft. 
and so on and so forth. You know, it was just a feeling of love for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, for the world in a way that we had never experienced before. And, and that was at a point then because of draft dodgers coming to Canada, other people being in turmoil, coming to the island like we did eventually because they were looking for simplicity to downsize their life, leaving the big cities and coming to this little island where they thought they'd find solace and peace. And some of the people came were very highly educated people, were professors, were psychologists, were lawyers. And, and they too, like Ken and I, had tried to find simplicity by detaching and lessening their material possessions, and that they found that they were still struggling. And sometimes because they had simplified their life so much by leaving a beautiful home in a big city and moving into a teepee to really simplify their life, and they found it such a struggle to adjust that they then got into blaming themselves and so on and so forth. So there was no peace of mind. They were cold, you know, they were, they were stressed. And, and then somehow, because they were on the island, they found Sid and they heard their own wisdom and moved from a teepee or living in their cars if they were homeless. I know a man that lived in his car for quite a length of time until he woke up to his true nature and moved ahead. And as I said in my write-up for the topic, what Sid said to us was, you can't leave society. You know, downsizing and simplifying your material possessions, that's not the answer. It may look like the answer, but he said, you are society. And when you wake up, your lives will start to change. And that's what we saw, is that the simplicity we were looking for in downsizing and detaching from so many material things appeared in a totally different light when we woke up to who we are on the inside. And I'm so glad, before I had that little insight, thought creates feeling, um, as part of our endeavor to become more in tune with nature and for Ken not to have to mow the lawn where we were living, you know, the little A-frame, we thought, we'll get a goat. <laughs> and, and so we'll have a goat, we'll have fresh milk, you know, we can make goat cheese, <laughs> and the goat will, will nibble our lawn. And we're really back to the land. And so we told Sid this one day when he came to visit. And he just roared with laughter. He said, really? He said, well, you know, I advise you, dearie, to maybe reconsider getting a goat because they're not all what they're made out to be. And I didn't get it because a friend on Salt Spring who had the goat and was trying to get rid of it, giving it away to anybody that would take it, and, and so Ken and I would go, oh, what a gift. Isn't she generous hearted? She wants to give us this goat. And Sid is just shaking his head like, really? Are you too serious? I grew up on a farm. I thought I can handle this goat. I mean, I went to get the cows. I milked cows. Not very well, I must admit. I gathered chick, you know, chicken eggs and cleaned the chicken coop. I thought a goat's nothing. I didn't know what Sid was on about, but there was, again, just a little twinkling of my wisdom that made me hesitate about taking on this goat, and Ken actually got it before we did. I did, and uh, he said, you know, maybe we should reconsider. We have chickens now, so let's just stick with chickens for a while and see how life unfolds, and that's what we did, and that was the last time we had chickens too, by the way. 
because I found, you know, been there, done that. We've had chickens. And um, so, yeah, been there, done that. So that's what I want to offer is, is seeing that everything we, we need in the world, all the how-tos we need in the world are right inside of us. And the last thing I want to add before I check in with you is something I read the other day in one of Sid's books. I seldom read anybody else's books. This has been just kind of my, uh, my way for a long time. I leave room to listen to my own wisdom. I leave room for quiet and for stillness. And then when I feel moved, I'll go to Sid's books. Like, who better to go to than Sid's books? That's not to say I don't learn from other people. If something is sent to me, or if I'm doing a, a webinar and I have conversation with you all, as I did yesterday on another webinar, I learn so much from talking with you all. But I don't want to fill my mind with a lot of other stuff. When I'm done with the webinar again, I just want to live. I want to move into living my learning, just living. And so even this morning, as I was reflecting, a thought crossed my mind. Gee, I wonder if I should listen to Sid a little bit, to one of his early audios. And then the next thought was, no, I just want to be still for about 10, 15 minutes. And, and that's what I did. I always do that if possible before I come in to do a, a retreat or uh, if I'm on a break during lunch, I make sure I have a little bit of time on my own to listen to my wisdom, to be guided. And sometimes nothing comes out, but peace. And what more, what more do we want but peace? So let me just check in with you all and see how this is sitting with you. Does it... You know, how, how does it feel to you? Does it make sense what I'm offering? Yeah. And do people know how to unmute themselves? Yes. Ah, yeah. Yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments, you can scroll down to the lower left-hand corner of the screen and unmute yourself. You're so quiet to me again, Bonnie. I can hardly hear you. Okay, is that better? No. <laughs> and I see Ellen is shaking her head too. But that's okay. I'm learning to read lips. <laughs> and maybe at the end of this call, you'll figure it out. I see a, a man there. Yes, and I think you've unmuted yourself. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Is it Swear? Yes, correct. Swear. Hi, Swear. Yeah, hi. So, so we meet. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm glad. Yeah, thank you very much. I think you uh, do, um, hit, um, um, hit, hit, hit it on the, on the head. I don't know why, how to pronounce it correctly, but um, um, I have this uh, with sessions too. Um, I allow myself some time just to, um, well, contemplate or, or just go to my core as i call it um and 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 sometimes something comes comes up and sometimes no, sometimes nothing comes up that's okay too that's fine mm -hmm. um but it's it uh reconnects you um with your inner self and that's very beautiful yes did you know to do that before you were introduced to this understanding no no, I just learned it um, around, well, around the weekend of the 20th of August. I just discovered it, and it's, it's oh. amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's wonderful. It, yeah. it has totally changed my life. 
Isn't that a wonderful thing, you know, to, to, to learn that and to, to have that degree of knowing from the inside out that the it learning gives, comes out of your core. It's, it gives you an enormous um, sense of strength uh -huh. or, 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 or confidence or, or co and contentment as well. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It's stunning. You must be offering a lot more peace and certainty to your clients because of the of your presence now because you have a more peaceful presence yes that's true um, the funny thing is that um, when i talk to my customers now my clients i notice that um they 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 are more much more relaxed uh, with me which is which i'm very grateful for because yeah. that helps enormously helps them enormously as well yeah yeah that's beautiful what yeah. an easy way to to offer our service absolutely. absolutely you know when we basically just show up and and that presence from the inside out really does the education and then we add words and sometimes less words is even better. Like I would said early when I first started to, to share that yes. I, I got the feeling, I got Sid's presence that was very helpful to me so long as he didn't talk about this. Isn't that fascinating to learn in that way? Because we're so used to learning via the intellect and listening to words to learn. And this is the opposite. Absolutely, it's it's amazing, and it's um, it is so powerful. Um, I can even notice it in my own. I just, oops, something went wrong. Okay. I don't know what happened. Um, my screen just went blank. Oh, you're, you're still, still here now. You're back. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I noticed that um, as suddenly I I I. Um, the depth of my uh, small um, uh, articles or blogs I write sometimes is suddenly deeper. And I was rereading one I wrote last week or something like that. And I said, hey, did I write that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Beautiful. I said, oh, it's, it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. It that's, is good. Yes. Thank and you for sharing that, Swear. And again, it's lovely to meet you. In person, so to speak. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to add something? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, I yeah, I chose not to be seen. But anyway, thank you for this webinar. Um, it seems that you were thinking about what I was thinking because you already brought up the subject I wanted to bring up when you talked about the political situation that's happening now compared to when it was in the 70s. So my question is, how can the, the principles help me to see the polarization in both the national and global community? I, I'm interested in what's happening, so I watch the news, but at the same time, when I watch the news, there's so much conflict. And, you know, it's all around. It's not just in the U.S. It's not just in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. I'm here in Sweden right now with my husband where we live, and it's even here. It's everywhere. And, you know. Yes, I do. How can, how, how, how can the principles help me and everybody else? It's a wonderful question. Um, that's, that's why I was so pleased that when I wasn't sure what my topic would be, this came out because... I too experience like how can I be more detached from the turmoil that's going on in the world. When I was away with my family for a month in May, um, we were in Europe. And um, so we were enjoying the sights of Europe. We were enjoying being together with family. We didn't watch any news for a month. So there was a great deal of freedom and space in my mind. 
when I came back home, because I do watch the news. And so when I came back home, I found my tolerance for the news. I didn't want it. Mm. I just didn't want it. And so we didn't watch it. And then gradually, gradually, I wanted to just put my finger on the pulse of the world again to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And what I found is because of that space, that inner peaceful space, my understanding had changed for the news. And I could watch it with no attachment to it. I watched it simply as information to see what was going on in the world. Now, did I stay there all the time? No. Sometimes I got gripped by the utter stupidity and ego that I saw displayed. Absolutely. But I don't like that feeling. And so I, I would pull back. It's like, I can either live in peace or I can live in turmoil and agitation because of what I'm viewing. And, and that allowed me to detach until I felt ready again to have another look at the news. And I just found that now I watch a third as much of the news as I used to because I can still keep my finger on the pulse of the world and hear and see what's going on. So I'm not ignorant, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to control me. I don't want it to flood my mind so much that I have no space, as Swear said, for my core yes. to express itself. And so that's, that's what I do. I watch little bits and pieces, and there are times, what was your name? Can Myrna. I ask? Myrna. What? Myrna. Okay, Myrna. There yes. are times now where even like one of the politicians in America that is so, so lost, I will see him simply as that, a very lost soul, and I have compassion for him. And then other times I see him when he again does something so mean-spirited and I, I don't have compassion, but I'm not boiling with it. I'm not in utter turmoil. It's like I'm more detached. I see it. I don't feel compassion. Neutral. That's the word I was looking for. I feel more neutral towards the news, period. I see. So it's like with this understanding, that's what the principles offer us. We are mind, consciousness, and thought in motion, which means we create our moment-to-moment -moment reality. We yeah. do that. And so that provides a platform for neutrality, for compassion, for unconditional love. And if we go in and out of that, that's, that's part of our life experience. That's part of our human, human element dancing with our spiritual element. That's life. That's the game of life. And for me, I'm glad that I'm not in it all the time, in that turmoil like I used to be. I'm glad that sometimes I feel gripped and other times I don't. And I'm grateful for that because it's given me balance. Does that help, Myrna? Yes, it does. And um, perhaps it, what has also helped me, I mean, there was a time when I tried to just stay out of the news, but then, it, like you said, you have to have the pulse of the world so that you, you're you in the world. You, I can't just be a vacuum outside somewhere. Right, that's right. So, so uh, recently, um, here in Sweden, we had the elections this past Sunday, and there have been a lot of political debates on TV and political interviews on TV. And I've lived here just 12 years, and it's very different from the kind of uh, system uh, that we have had in the, in the States. 
So when I'm listening to the debates and the interviews and the politicians, they, they're asked a question, they don't answer it. Instead, they say their political mantra and I'm like, I get confused. So I thought, am I the only one? Because I've only lived here for 12 years or, and everybody else perhaps understand what's going on. My frustration be, became so, so much that I started writing down my thoughts. And in the end, I wrote down something which I sent to the newspaper, um, our regional newspaper. It, I said, here's a letter to you politicians. Can you please do this? I was very respectful. I said, well, can you just say in a very short uh, sentence what you stand for? And if there's a question, can you just answer it? Say, if it's a yes, just say why. If it's a no, just say why. And then just think that if a seven-year-old can understand what you say and what you mean, so can I. <laughs> and so can other people. Yeah. So I, I, it was my frustration and I just let it out and I actually felt good. Yeah. I, I really respect how you offered your wisdom. And it, at that point, and when you said, I felt good, that's the job done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like now you, as a lawyer, you can say, I rest my case. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you yes. offered what you had to offer with wisdom and with respect. I love that you said that. And now you can rest your case. To me, what you've illustrated is what I call spiritual activism, where you don't hold yourself apart, apart from the world or above the world because we know so much. We're a part of the world. As Sid said to me that I shared with you all earlier, we are society. But the way you handled that, and even though you said like you were frustrated, you came out of that frustration with respect and simplicity. And I love that. When I worked in some of these really troubled communities in New York uh, with Roger Mills, um, there was a great deal of turmoil between these um, inner city communities and the police and the city government and so on. And the people we were working with were very strong at, um, activists who fought. And they didn't, the only way they knew how to fight was oftentimes with violence um, and so on. And so it was like violence against violence and they didn't get anywhere except more violence. Mm -hmm. As Roger and I started to share the principles with them and this understanding, they came to what you did. Myrna, they came to see that they could meet with the police and with the mayor with respect. And they could still lay out their concerns, not as demands with like, you know, you've got to do this, but with firmness and certainty and the respect more often than not carried their request to fruition. And that's when I realized, you know, it's not that we've become doormats because of this understanding. We still are activists in different ways. You did what you did. The people that we worked with in New York did what they did with respect and requests. And, and I don't, the way I'm an activist is I sit in my office and I do webinars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I share my understanding and my love in that way. And because everything in the world is made up of the same formless spiritual energy behind the physical form of life, when we serve from love, however we do it, it ripples out into the world and touches the world without us having to leave our office if we choose not to. And you did. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've read about uh, Sid and I've 
listened to many webinars. And when I wrote what I wrote, after I read it, I, it didn't seem like I wrote it. It's very, it's very interesting because when it was published in the paper, I was wondering if I wrote it. I wasn't sure. See, isn't that beautiful? That's the true you. That's your true nature expressing itself. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to move on now, my dear, if that's okay, okay with you. Yes, Thank please. You. Thank you. You're very welcome. Is there anyone else that has something to offer? No. I, I'll, I'll, I'll speak no, up. No, for no, I'm just looking yeah, for yeah. something. I, I, Oops. Um, so, sorry, someone came into the room that was in. So I just want to say I love this term of spiritual activism. And what, what, I, what I'm seeing for me is that we all do that our own way. That's right. Like the, 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 how the separate, how the, my understanding of separate realities merges with spiritual activism that we can, um, I'm sorry for the background noise, that we can um, be in our office on a webinar, that we can send a prayer or blessing out to the world, that we can write letters, and that it just looks like different things at different times, and, and, um, and it's unique to us and in the moment. So thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. And, and thank you for sharing what you did, Ellen. I love that. It, it really does speak to the simplicity of, of life again, you know? We, we all have been so used to doing we need to do something and and it just really takes turning around and looking to see how much more we can offer it said used to call that doing without doing oh that's beautiful what does that mean i said to him are you kidding me sid doing without doing i didn't you know over my head didn't get it but again like that was all he said he never tried to explain those insights you know it, it, again he was so um natural in in pointing in a direction but letting us find it. And, and so ultimately I did find like the spiritual activism that just sitting in my desk, sitting out on my patio, deadheading plants, being at peace and in harmony with this physical world and the spiritual world. That is doing without doing because I know it's rippling out into the world and there's nothing better. Nothing better. So thank you. Thank you, Ellen. I think there's someone else thank here. Thank you for being such a beautiful model of that. Oh, thank you. Ellen, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes. What, what uh, for me, uh, that's, um, I find that I enjoy the political scenery much like I enjoy a tennis match. And so I find that um, it helps me both enjoy at the same time stay a little bit out of it. And it's like when I enjoy playing with my tennis buddies, uh, it's fun to play the game. But it's, it's something, there's a bigger game, and I'm just enjoying them. And I think that for uh, 
I, I just really enjoy it. It, it just is like a game to me uh, when I see the different sides and I try to listen to across the spectrum and I see that, wow, it's really a good match. And much like when I watch Federer and Nadal play, but it, it's like, I just enjoy, I guess I just enjoy myself not getting caught up in it either. So anyway. Can you tell me your name? William Hutcherson. William. Nice yeah. to meet you, William. Yes, and, and met you up at Salt Spring Island briefly. And I tell you, I always had such a nice warm, my wife and I both had such a um, nice, warm feeling from you. Instantly. You came, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You came with Bill Pettit, right? And Linda? Yes, 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 yes. yes. My wife, I my wife, you. My wife Vidi, and, and it was just a nice, warm experience all the way around. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. I remember both of you coming now. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you. It's Hi. Nice you, right? Yes. 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 Anyway. Well, it's lovely to see you again. And I appreciate that, William, that um, for you, it's a game. If, if that's how you see it and you feel good about it and you're fascinated, then that's lovely. Enjoy the game. The only thing I'm going to offer is... Just know that even though it's a game, there is that deeper game going on inside of you, right? Where you might find something even more. So like not to fill your head with that outer game. Well, what I see is a lot of compassion for the insecurity that I see there. Beautiful. And and it's like, wow, I just feel sometimes, I feel almost sorry, but I just have a lot of compassion because it's almost like he, certain people just have to do what they're doing out of their insecurity. And it's yeah. like they're driven. And so I'm just feeling so relieved that when I don't have to do that myself. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. I, I really, I feel that from you. I yeah. feel that from you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, too. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else? Okay. Hey, Elsie, it's Ned. Oh, hey, Ned. How are you? Good. Good now, we've you. met. Sure, sure we have. Um, yeah, we met at a conference one time. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to thank you for that. You came over to me one time and, and just came and sat with me. Was it uh, the PPGC my... conference? Yeah, in Minneapolis. Okay. I remember <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah and, and every time I see you, hear you, or read your stuff, I just get filled with this good feeling. Oh. And I don't know what I read or what I hear from you an hour from now after this is over. I won't remember the words, but I'll have the feeling. And, and you, you share this, this feeling of love, this feeling of, of warmth. That's uh -huh. just magnificent. So thank you. Just keep doing it. <laughs> we need it. You know, and like you said, you know, this is your activism is to just share the feeling. And, 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 and what more can anybody do if they can share the good feeling? Because it is infectious. It and is. when you share it, then I carry it. And then I share it. That's and it right. goes on. So thank you. I just wanted to say hi and thank you. Thank you, Ned. I really appreciate that. And I'm touched by that. And I, I mean, I love that you ended by saying, you know, the feeling comes from inside of you. And you're touched by it. And then you go out and you share it too. You know what I mean? So it just keeps rippling out there. And, and what I appreciate is that when we go out, like if, if I have to go do, pick up a few groceries after this webinar, <clears throat> I know that I'm sharing love in the grocery store. Whether I say anything or, any, or what, you know, because I'm just at this point operating at a higher spiritual level and and people feel that i know our neighbors who 
we've lived in this retirement community now for about 10, 12 years. Some of them have sort of found out what I do, but most of them don't know. But we had a, a neighborhood barbecue a couple of weeks ago. And I, I find that people are drawn to that feeling with Ken and I. We don't think we're any different or doing anything any different. But it's the same way I was drawn to Sid. And so people are drawn to you when you go out. And, and you may not say anything, but their true nature is responding to your true nature, expressing love. And that's spiritual activism. That's doing without doing. And I, I am so grateful for that, you know, for that gift from this understanding to share love with the world and to be kind to one another. Thank you, Ned. Thank you. Wow. Hi, Elsie. It's uh, hi. Hi, I can, it's Carol. I can see. I know. I'm way up here. Okay. <laughs> I need you at the grocery store in exchange. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, lovely to see you, my dear. We're neighbors. Carol and I are neighbors. And Carol, this is very mundane. Thank you for the heads up about the smoked Gouda. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> That's and you're getting lots more in, so maybe the two of us are keeping it coming. <laughs> I tell you, we are. Ken and I have fallen in love with it, so we pick it up all the time. So I hope there's still enough for you. <laughs> oh, yes, I've got a couple in spare. <laughs> aw, aw. Anyways, my dear, so what did you want to share? Well, this is a meaningful talk to me. It really is, because today my spirits were low, and they have been for a little while. But I also see that sometimes when I'm low, okay, I'm, lear I'm, I'm learning now to, to be quiet and just be within myself and don't react because this will pass and it's just a low time in my, you know, spirituality or whatever. So that's fine. But then I find I agitate and I agitate and I agitate and I find I'm getting cranky with myself and, and all this. And then all of a sudden I get this inspiring sort of moment of, oh, wow. You know, so that's what it's been all about, you know, and this, this thing will come and it's kind of, to me, it feels like a, 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 a piece of sand and a clam and how it works or an oyster and how it works away and then you get the pearl, you know, so I'm hoping this always happens, <laughs> but yeah. if it doesn't, maybe it wasn't meant to be. No, but no, I, I think, I, first of all, I really appreciate how you've expressed this experience. You know, it's very original, and I appreciate that, <laughs> your unique voice. Oh. And, and it is. Like, I, that's, that's the game of life between our human nature and our intellect and our spiritual nature and spiritual intelligence. It, it is that, like tennis, like William was saying before, it's like a tennis game. But then here... Like you said, you're in that low mood and you, you come to learn to sort of accept that too and not give it too much energy as best as you can. And then something comes up and you realize, oh, that's what it was about. Yeah. So you learn something. That's beautiful. And all, all that is, you know, the only thing I can add, Carol, is just simply honor that yeah. honor that that moment of inspiration came out and said so that's what it is yeah. honor that don't beat yourself up that oh i had a low mood forget about that that's natural honor there was that moment of inspiration that's yeah. my true nature and that you'll stay there longer and longer ah wonderful thank you elsie Thank you, Carol. Thank you for coming on. I'm delighted that you joined us. Well, I'm just delighted to be in the same neighborhood. I feel vibes from here. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful.
All right, my dear, thank you. Well, I think, Bonnie, we have come to the end of our, our talk. Are you there, Bonnie? I am, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Barely? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I, I just, if I can just add one more little wee thing. I just want to reiterate this thing about being kind. You know, for all of us to, to live in our learning, to live in love as best as we can, and to be kind to one another. And we've got the world in the, I was going to say in the palm of our hands, but that's outside. We've got the world inside. So thank you again, 3PGC, for inviting you, inviting me. <laughs> and Bonnie, thank you for being a lovely hostess. Thank you so much, Elsie, and what a beautiful way to end. Um, I hope people can hear me. I, uh, I want to make sure to get this in that the next webinar is on September 26th with Angus Ross. And I uh, hope to see you all then live, too. So. Okay, and thank you all, everybody that has uh, contributed both, um, you know, like verbally and just by participating spiritually. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Elsie. Bye. <laughs>